Section one of Rainer Maria Rilke Poems. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Raina Maria Rilke Poems by Raina Maria Rilke, translated by Jesse Lamont, eighteen sixty two to nineteen forty seven. Section one. First Poems evening the bleak fields are asleep my heart alone wakes the evening in the harbour down his red sails takes night guardian of dreams now wanders through the land the moon a lily white blossoms within her hand end of poem mary virgin how came how came from out thy night mary so much light and so much gloom who was thy bridegroom thou callest thou callest and thou hast forgot that thou the same art not who came to me in thy virginity i am still so blossoming so young how shall i go on tiptoe from childhood to annunciation through the dim twilight into thy garden End of poem. End of section one. Section two of Rainer Maria Rilke Poems by Rainer Maria Rilke, translated by Jesse Lamont, eighteen sixty two to nineteen forty seven. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Book of Pictures poems one to eight presaging i am like a flag unfurled in space i scent the oncoming winds and must bend with them while the things beneath are not yet stirring while doors close gently and there is silence in the chimneys and the windows do not yet tremble and the dust is still heavy then i feel the storm and am vibrant like the sea and expand and withdraw into myself and thrust myself forth and am alone in the great storm end of poem autumn the leaves fall fall as from far like distant gardens withered in the heavens they fall with slow and lingering descent and in the nights the heavy earth too falls from out the stars into the solitude thus all doth fall this hand of mine must fall and lo the other one it is the law but there is one who holds this falling infinitely softly in his hands end of poem silent hour whoever weeps somewhere out in the world weeps without cause in the world weeps over me whoever laughs somewhere out in the night laughs without cause in the night laughs at me whoever wanders somewhere in the world wanders in vain in the world wanders to me whoever dies somewhere in the world dies without cause in the world looks at me End of poem the angels they all have tired mouths and luminous illimitable souls and a longing as if for sin trembles at times through their dreams they all resemble one another in god's garden they are silent like many many intervals in his mighty melody but when they spread their wings they awaken the winds that stir as though god with his far-reaching master hands turned the pages of the dark book of beginning end of poem solitude solitude is like a rain that from the sea at dusk begins to rise it floats remote across the far-off plain upward into its dwelling-place the skies then o'er the town it slowly sinks again 
like rain it softly falls at that dim hour when ghostly lanes turn toward the shadowy morn when bodies weighed with satiate passion's power sad disappointed from each other turn when men with quiet hatred burning deep together in a common bed must sleep through the grey phantom shadows of the dawn lo solitude floats down the river wan end of poem kings in legends kings in old legends seem like mountains rising in the evening light they blind all with their gleam their loins encircled are by girdles bright their robes are edged with bands of precious stones the rarest earth affords with richly jewelled hands they hold their slender shining naked swords End of poem. The Knight The Knight rides forth in coat of mail into the roar of the world, and here is life, the vines in the vale, and friend and foe, and the feast in the hall, and May and the maid, and the glen and the grail. God's flags afloat on every wall in a thousand streets unfurled beneath the armour of the night behind the chain's black links death crouches and thinks and thinks when will the sword's blade sharp and bright forth from the scabbard spring and cut the network of the cloak in meshing me ring on ring when will the foe's delivering stroke set me free to dance and sing End of poem. the boy i wish i might become like one of these who in the night on horses wild astride with torches flaming out like loosened hair on to the chase through the great swift wind ride i wish to stand as on a boat and dare the sweeping storm mighty like flag unrolled in darkness but with helmet made of gold that shimmers restlessly and in a row behind me in the dark ten men that glow with helmets that are restless too like mine now old and dull now clear as glass they shine one stands by me and blows a blast apace on his great flashing trumpet and the sound shrieks through the vast black solitude around through which as through a wild mad dream we race the houses fall behind us on their knees before us bend the streets and then we gain the great squares yield to us and then we seize and on our steeds rush like the roar of rain end of poem end of section two Section three of Rainer Maria Rilke Poems by Rainer Maria Rilke Translated by Jesse Lamont, eighteen sixty two to nineteen forty seven. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Book of Pictures, Poems nine to fifteen. Initiation Whosoever thou art, out in the evening roam out from thy room thou know'st in every part and far in the dim distance leave thy home whosoever thou art lift thine eyes which lingering see the shadows on the foot-worn threshold fall lift thine eyes slowly to the great dark tree that stands against heaven solitary tall and thou hast visioned life its meanings rise like words that in the silence clearer grow as they unfold before thy will to know gently withdraw thine eyes end of poem the neighbour strange violin dost thou follow me in many foreign cities far away thy lone voice spoke to me like memory do hundreds play thee or does but one play are there in all great cities tempest-tossed men who would seek the rivers but for thee who but for thee would be forever lost why drifts thy lonely voice always to me why am i the neighbour always of those who force to sing thy trembling strings life is more heavy thy song says 
than the vast heavy burden of all things end of poem song of the statue whoso loveth me that he will give his precious life for me i shall be set free from the stone if some one drowns for me in the sea i shall have life life of my own for life i ache i long for the singing blood the stone is so still and cold i dream of life life is good will no one love me and be bold and me awake i weep and weep alone weep always for my stone what joy is my blood to me if it ripens like red wine it cannot call back from the sea the life that was given for mine given for love's sake end of poem maidens one others must by a long dark way stray to the mystic bards or ask some one who has heard them sing or touch the magic chords only the maidens question not the bridges that lead to dream their luminous smiles are like strands of pearls on a silver vase agleam the maidens doors of life lead out where the song of the poet soars and out beyond to the great world to the world beyond the doors end of poem maidens two maidens the poets learn from you to tell how solitary and remote you are as night is lighted by one high bright star they draw light from the distance where you dwell for poet you must always maiden be even though his eyes the woman in you wake wedding brocade your fragile wrists would break mysterious elusive from him flee within his garden let him wait alone where benches stand expectant in the shade within the chamber where the lyre was played where he received you as the eternal one go it grows dark your voice and form no more his senses seek he now no longer sees a white robe fluttering under dark beech trees along the pathway where it gleamed before he loves the long paths where no footfalls ring and he loves much the silent chamber where like a soft whisper through the quiet air he hears your voice far distant vanishing the softly stealing echo comes again from crowds of men whom wearily he shuns and many see you there so his thought runs and tenderest memories are pierced with pain End of poem the bride call me beloved call aloud to me the bride her vigil at the window keeps the evening wanes to dusk the dimness creeps down empty alleys of the old plane tree oh let thy voice enfold me close about or from this dark house lonely and remote through deep blue gardens where grey shadows float i will pour forth my soul with hands stretched out End of poem. Autumnal Day Lord, it is time. So great was summer's glow. Thy shadows lay upon the dial's faces, And o'er wide spaces let thy tempests blow. Command to ripen the last fruits of thine, Give to them two more burning days, And press the last sweetness into the heavy wine he who has now no house will ne'er build one who is alone will now remain alone he will awake will read will letters write through the long day and in the lonely night and restless solitary he will rove where the leaves rustle wind-blown in the grove end of poem moonlight night south german night the ripe moon hangs above weaving enchantment o'er the shadowy lea from the old tower the hours fall heavily into the dark as though into the sea a rustle a call of night watch in the grove then for a while void silence fills the air 
and then a violin from god knows where awakes and slowly sings o oh love o oh love end of poem in april again the woods are odorous the lark lifts on upsoaring wings the heaven grey that hung above the treetops veiled and dark where branches bare disclosed the empty day after long rainy afternoons an hour comes with its shafts of golden light and flings them at the windows in a radiant shower and raindrops beat the panes like timorous wings then all is still the stones are crooned to sleep by the soft sound of rain that slowly dies and cradled in the branches hidden deep in each bright bud a slumbering silence lies end of poem end of section three section four of rainer maria rilke poems by rainer maria rilke translated by jesse lamont eighteen sixty two to nineteen forty seven this librivox recording is in the public domain memories of a childhood the darkness hung like richness in the room when like a dream the mother entered there and then a glass's tinkle stirred the air near where a boy sat in the silent gloom the room betrayed the mother so she felt she kissed her boy and questioned are you here and with a gesture that he held most dear down for a moment by his side she knelt toward the piano they both shyly glanced for she would sing to him on many a night and the child seated in the fading light would listen strangely as if half entranced his large eyes fastened with a quiet glow upon the hand which by her ring seemed bent and slowly wandering o'er the white keys went moving as though against a drift of snow end of poem death before us great death stands our fate held close within his quiet hands when with proud joy we lift life's red wine up to drink deep of the mystic shining cup and ecstasy through all our being leaps death bows his head and weeps end of poem the ashanti jardin d'acclimatation paris no vision of exotic southern countries no dancing women supple brown and tall whirling from out their falling draperies to melodies that beat a fierce mad call no sound of songs that from the hot blood rise no languorous stretching dusky velvet maids flashing like gleaming weapon their bright eyes no swift wild thrill the quickening blood pervades only mouths widening with a still broad smile of comprehension a strange knowing leer at white men at their vanity and guile an understanding that fills one with fear the beasts in cages much more loyal are restlessly pacing pacing to and fro dreaming of countries beckoning from afar lands where they roamed in days of long ago they burn with an unquenched and smothered fire consumed by longings over which they brood oblivious of time without desire alone and lost in their great solitude end of poem remembrance expectant and waiting you muse on the great rare thing which alone to enhance your life you would choose the awakening of the stone the deeps where yourself you would lose in the dusk of the shelves embossed shine the volumes in gold and browns and you think of countries once crossed of pictures of shimmering gowns of the women that you have lost and it comes to you then at last and you rise for you are aware of a year in the far-off past with its wonder and fear and prayer End of poem music 
what play you o oh boy through the garden it stole like wandering steps like a whisper then mute what play you o oh boy lo your gypsying soul is caught and held fast in the pipes of pan's flute and what conjure you imprisoned is the song it lingers and longs in the reeds where it lies your young life is strong but how much more strong is the longing that through your music sighs let your flute be still and your soul float through waves of sound formless as waves of the sea for here your song lived and it wisely grew before it was forced into melody its wings beat gently its note no more calls its flight has been spent by you dreaming boy now it no longer steals over my walls but in my garden i'd woo it to joy End of poem. Maiden Melancholy A young knight comes into my mind as from some myth of old. He came. You felt yourself entwined as a great storm would round you wind. He went. A blessing undefined seemed left as when church bells declined and left you wrapped in prayer you fain would cry aloud but bind your scarf about you and tear blind weep softly in its fold a young knight comes into my mind full armoured forth to fare his smile was luminously kind like glint of ivory enshrined like a home longing undivined like christmas snows where dark ways wind like sea pearls about turquoise twined like moonlight silver when combined with a loved book's rare gold end of poem end of section four section five of Rainer maria rilke poems by Rainer maria rilke Translated by Jesse Lamont, eighteen sixty two to nineteen forty seven. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Maidens at Confirmation, Paris in May, nineteen o three. The white veiled maids to confirmation go, through deep green garden paths they slowly wind. Their childhood they are leaving now behind, the future will be different, they know oh will it come they wait it must come soon the next long hour slowly strikes at last the whole house stirs again the feast is past and sadly passes by the afternoon like resurrection were the garments white the wreathed procession walked through trees arched wide into the church as cool as silk inside with long aisles of tall candles flaming bright the lights all shone like jewels rich and rare to solemn eyes that watched them gleam and flare then through the silence the great song rose high up to the vaulted dome like clouds it soared then luminously gently down it poured over white veils like rain it seemed to die the wind through the white garments softly stirred and they grew very coloured in each fold and each fold hidden blossoms seemed to hold and flowers and stars and fluting notes of bird and dim quaint figures shimmering like gold seemed to come forth from distant myths of old outside the day was one of green and blue with touches of a luminous glowing red across the quiet pond the small waves sped beyond the city gardens hidden from view sent odours of sweet blossoms on the breeze and singing sounded through the far-off trees it was as though garlands crowned everything and all things were touched softly by the sun and many windows opened one by one and the light trembled on them glistening end of poem the woman who loves ah yes i long for you to you i glide and lose myself for to you i belong the hope that hitherto i have denied imperious comes to me as from your side serious unfaltering and swift and strong 
those times the times when i was quite alone by memories wrapped that whispered to me low my silence was the quiet of a stone over which rippling murmuring waters flow but in these weeks of the awakening spring something within me has been freed something that in the past dark years unconscious lay which rises now within me and commands and gives my poor warm life into your hands who know not what i was that yesterday End of poem. Pont du Carousel Upon the bridge the blind man stands alone. Grey like a mist-veiled monument, he towers as though of nameless realms the boundary stone about which circle distant starry hours. He seems the centre around which stars glow, while all earth's ostentations surge below immovably and silently he stands placed where the confused current ebbs and flows past fathomless dark depths that he commands a shallow generation drifting goes end of poem madness she thinks i am have you not seen who are you then marie i am a queen i am a queen to your knee to your knee and then she weeps i was a child who were you then marie know you that i was no man's child poor and in rags said she and then a princess i became to whom men bend their knees to princes things are not the same as those a beggar sees and those things which have made you great came to you tell me when one night one night one night quite late things became different then i walked the lane which presently with strung chords seemed to bend then marie became melody and danced from end to end the people watched with startled mien and passed with frightened glance for all know that only a queen may dance in the lanes dance end of poem lament oh all things are long passed away and far a light is shining but the distant star from which it still comes to me has been dead a thousand years in the dim phantom boat that glided past some ghastly thing was said a clock just struck within some house remote which house i long to still my beating heart beneath the sky's vast dome i long to pray of all the stars there must be far away a single star which still exists apart and i believe that i should know the one which has alone endured and which alone like a white city that all space commands at the ray's end in the high heaven stands end of poem symbols from infinite longings finite deeds rise as fountains spring toward far-off glowing skies but rushing swiftly upward weakly bend and trembling from their lack of power descend so through the falling torrent of our fears our joyous force leaps like these dancing tears end of poem end of section five Section 6 of Rainer Maria Rilke Poems by Rainer Maria Rilke Translated by Jesse Lamont, 1862-1947 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. New Poems Early Apollo As when at times there breaks through branches bare A morning vibrant with the breath of spring, about this poet head a splendour rare transforms it almost to a mortal thing there is as yet no shadow in his glance to cool his temples for the laurel's glow but later o'er those marble brows perchance a rose garden with bushes tall will grow and single petals one by one will fall o'er the still mouth and break its silent thrall the mouth that trembles with a dawning smile as though a song were rising there the while End of poem. 
tomb of a young girl we still remember the same as of yore all that has happened once again must be as grows a lemon tree upon the shore it was like that your light small breasts you bore and his blood's current coursed like the wild sea that god who was the wanderer the slim despoiler of fair women he the wise but sweet and glowing as your thought of him who cast a shadow over your young limb while bending like your arched brows o'er your eyes end of poem the poet you hour from me you ever take your flight your swift wings wound me as they were along without you void would be my day and night without you i'll not capture my great song i have no earthly spot where i can live i have no love i have no household fane and all the things to which myself i give impoverish me with richness they attain End of poem. the panther his weary glance from passing by the bars has grown into a dazed and vacant stare it seems to him there are a thousand bars and out beyond those bars the empty air the pad of his strong feet that ceaseless sound of supple tread behind the iron bands is like a dance of strength circling around while in the circle stunned a great will stands but there are times the pupils of his eyes dilate the strong limbs stand alert apart tense with the flood of visions that arise only to sink and die within his heart end of poem growing blind among all the others there sat a guest who sipped her tea as if one apart and she held her cup not quite like the rest once she smiled so it pierced one's heart when the group of people arose at last and laughed and talked in a merry tone as lingeringly through the rooms they passed i saw that she followed alone tense and still like one who to sing must rise before a throng on a festal night she lifted her head and her bright glad eyes were like pools which reflected light she followed on slowly after the last as though some object must be passed by and yet as if were it once but past she would no longer walk but fly end of poem the spanish dancer as a lit match first flickers in the hands before it flames and darts out from all sides bright twitching tongues so ringed by growing bands of spectators she quivering glowing stands poised tensely for the dance then forward glides and suddenly becomes a flaming torch her bright hair flames her burning glances scorch and with a daring art at her command her whole robe blazes like a firebrand from which is stretched each naked arm awake gleaming and rattling like a frightened snake and then as though the fire fainter grows she gathers up the flame again it glows as with proud gesture and imperious air she flings it to the earth and it lies there furiously flickering and crackling still then haughtily victorious but with sweet swift smile of greeting she puts forth her will and stamps the flames out with her small firm feet end of poem offering my body glows in every vein and blooms to fullest flower since i first knew thee my walk unconscious pride and power assumes who art thou then thou who awaitest me when from the past i draw myself the while i lose old trays as leaves of autumn fall i only know the radiance of thy smile like the soft gleam of stars transforming all through childhood's years i wandered unaware of shimmering visions my thoughts now arrests to offer thee as on an altar fair that's lighted by the bright flame of thy hair and wreathed by the blossoms of thy breasts end of poem love song 
when my soul touches yours a great chord sings how shall i tune it then to other things oh that some spot in darkness could be found that does not vibrate whene'er your depth sound but everything that touches you and me welds us as played strings sound one melody where is the instrument whence the sounds flow and who's the master hand that holds the bow O oh, sweet song end of poem archaic torso of apollo we cannot fathom his mysterious head through the veiled eyes no flickering ray is sent but from his torso gleaming light is shed as from a candelabrum inward bent his glance there glows and lingers otherwise the round breast would not blind you with its grace nor could the soft curved circle of the thighs steal to the ark whence issues a new race nor could this stark and stunted stone display vibrance beneath the shoulder's heavy bar nor shine like fur upon a beast of prey nor break forth from its lines like a great star there is no spot that does not bind you fast and transport you back back to a far past end of poem end of section six Section 7 of Rainer Maria Rilke Poems by Rainer Maria Rilke Translated by Jesse Lamont, 1862-1947 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Book of Hours The Book of a Monk's Life I live my life in circles that grow wide and endlessly unroll. I may not reach the last, but on I glide, strong pinioned toward my goal. About the old tower, dark against the sky, the beat of my wings hums. I circle about God, sweep far and high on through millenniums. Am I a bird that skims the clouds along, or am I a wild storm, or a great song? many have painted her but there was one who drew his radiant colours from the sun mysteriously glowing through a background dim when he was suffering she came to him and all the heavy pain within his heart rose in his hands and stole into his art his canvas is the beautiful bright veil through which her sorrow shines there where the frail texture o'er her sad lips is closely drawn a trembling smile softly begins to dawn though angels with seven candles light the place you cannot read the secret of her face in cassocks clad i have had many brothers in southern cloisters where the laurel grows they paint madonnas like fair human mothers and i dream of young titians and of others in which the god with shining radiance glows but though my vigil constantly i keep my god is dark like woven texture flowing a hundred drinking roots all intertwined i only know that from his warmth i'm growing more i know not my roots lie hidden deep my branches only are swayed by the wind thou anxious one and dost thou then not hear against thee all my surging senses sing about thy face in circles drawing near my thought floats like a fluttering white wing dost thou not see before thee stands my soul in silence wrapped my springtime's prayer to pray but when thy glance rests on me then my whole being quickens and blooms like trees in may when thou art dreaming then i am thy dream but when thou art awake i am thy will potent with splendour radiant and sublime expanding like far space starlit and still into the distant mystic realm of time i love my life's dark hours in which my senses quicken and grow deep 
while as from faint incense of faded flowers or letters old i magically steep myself in days gone by again i give myself unto the past again i live out of my dark hours wisdom dawns apace infinite life unrolls its boundless space then i am shaken as a sweeping storm shakes a ripe tree that grows above a grave round whose cold clay the roots twine fast and warm and youth's fair visions that glowed bright and brave dreams that were closely cherished and for long are lost once more in sadness and in song end of the book of a monk's life section eight of rainer maria rilke poems by rainer maria rilke translated by jesse lamont eighteen sixty two to nineteen forty seven this librivox recording is in the public domain the book of hours the book of pilgrimage by day thou art the legend and the dream that like a whisper floats about all men the deep and brooding stillnesses which seem after the hour has struck to close again and when the day with drowsy gesture bends and sinks to sleep beneath the evening skies as from each roof a tower of smoke ascends so does thy realm my god around me rise all those who seek thee tempt thee and those who find would bind thee to gesture and to form but i would comprehend thee as the wide earth unfolds thee thou growest with my maturity thou art in calm and storm i ask of thee no vanity to evidence and prove thee thou wert in eons old perform no miracles for me but justify thy laws to me which as the years pass by me all soundlessly unfold in a house was one who arose from the feast and went forth to wander in distant lands because there was somewhere far off in the east a spot which he sought where a great church stands and ever his children when breaking their bread thought of him and rose up and blessed him as dead in another house was the one who had died who still sat at table and drank from the glass and ever within the walls did abide for out of the house he could no more pass and his children set forth to seek for the spot where stands the great church which he forgot extinguish my eyes i still can see you close my ears i can hear your footsteps fall and without feet i still can follow you and without voice i still can to you call break off my arms and i can embrace you enfold you with my heart as with a hand hold my heart my brain will take fire of you as flax ignites from a lit firebrand and flame will sweep in a swift rushing flood through all the singing currents of my blood in the deep nights i dig for you o treasure to seek you over the wide world i roam for all abundance is but meagre measure of your bright beauty which is yet to come over the road to you the leaves are blowing few follow it the way is long and steep you dwell in solitude oh does your glowing heart in some far-off valley lie asleep my bloody hands with digging bruised i've lifted spread like a tree i stretch them in the air to find you before day to night has drifted i reach out into space to seek you there then as though with a swift impatient gesture flashing from distant stars on sweeping wing you come and over earth a magic vesture steals gently as the rain falls in the spring end of the book of pilgrimage section nine of rainer maria rilke poems by rainer maria rilke translated by jesse lamont eighteen sixty two to nineteen forty seven this librivox recording is in the public domain the book of hours the book of poverty and death 
her mouth is like the mouth of a fine bust that cannot utter sound nor breathe nor kiss but that had once from life received all this which shaped its subtle curves and ever must from fullness of past knowledge dwell alone a thing apart a parable in stone alone thou wanderest through space profound one with the hidden face thou art poverty's great rose the eternal metamorphose of gold into the light of sun thou art the mystic homeless one into the world thou never came too mighty thou too great to name voice of the storm song that the wild wind sings thou harp that shatters those who play thy strings a watcher of thy spaces make me make me a listener at thy stone give to me vision and then wake me upon thy oceans all alone thy rivers courses let me follow where they leap the crags in their flight and where at dusk in caverns hollow they croon to music of the night send me far into thy barren land where the snow clouds the wild wind drives where monasteries like grey shrouds stand august symbols of unlived lives there pilgrims climb slowly one by one and behind them a blind man goes with him i will walk till day is done up the pathway that no one knows end of the book of poverty and death end of reina maria rilke poems by reina maria rilke translated by jesse lamont 1862 to 1947